Hey lovelies! So when it comes to appetizers for summer entertaining, I am a huge fan of crostini. It's really easy to make, but of course the flavor possibilities are endless. And today I'm gonna to show you three yummy ways to prepare it that will totally wow your guests. So to get started, for each of these three recipes, of course we need to make our crostini. Now to do this, I am using just a plain baguette and I'm going to cut it into thin slices. When it comes to making crostini versus a traditional garlic bread, let's say, it's important your slices are pretty thin because you want them to be really, really crisp as opposed to sort of soft and chewy in the center. That way your toppings really are the star of the show. I'll arrange my slices on a baking sheet and brush each of them with a little bit of olive oil. If you wanted to use the melted butter here instead, that is definitely an option as well. But of course, olive oil keeps things just a bit lighter. Then, pro tip, if you wanna amp up the flavor of your crostini even more, go ahead and take half a clove of garlic and simply rub the cut side on the surface of your bread before baking it. It infuses your crostini with this beautiful garlic essence without overpowering it, super good. I also recommend hitting each of your crostini with just a little sprinkle of salt, because of course we love to season things as we go. And these are headed into the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and they'll usually cook up in between six and eight minutes. You wanna keep a really close eye on them because of course you want them to be nice and crispy, but not burnt. And I will say that can be a fine line sometimes. Once your crostini are prepared, you can get thinking about your toppings. Our first delicious crostini topping is actually going to be just a classic bruschetta recipe or bruschetta, depending on where you're from. Of course, with any great bruschetta recipe, this one starts with some beautiful ripe vine tomatoes. Sometimes I find with a bruschetta recipe, all of the chunks of tomatoes are just too big and overpowering. I like a nice fine chop and that's what I've done here. To that, I'm adding some shallot that I've just minced. You wanna make sure, again, you have a nice fine mince going. I've got some basil, classic summery flavors, basil and tomato. I'm also going to add just a drizzle of good quality olive oil to this. And then I'm going to grate in some garlic. Grating your garlic in a case like this is always a great idea. That way no one bites into a big chunk of garlic because that's not delicious. And that's how easy bruschetta is to make. Can you believe some restaurants charge like $15 for like four slices of this? Then of course, just a little salt and pepper goes a long way. Now it's just a matter of piling this deliciousness high on our lovely crostini. Don't be shy, everyone. Load it up. I like a lot of bruschetta in every bite. Now, bruschetta can be served cold just like this, or if you wanted to, you could heat it up in the oven for a few minutes just so it's nice and warm. I have to say, sometimes the simplest recipes are the best recipes, and this is one of those times. Our next recipe is similar to the classic bruschetta we just made, but it's got a couple tasty twists that really set it apart. To get started, I've got some gorgeous roasted red peppers that I've really finely chopped in my bowl. Of course, you can always buy your roasted red peppers, either jarred or in your deli section, or you can roast your own red peppers. I did a video on that a few years ago, and I will link it in the description box if you wanna take a look and see how it's done. Whether you're using store-bought or homemade, it's all going to be delicious because of that smoky, sweet roasted red pepper flavor. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh parsley to my roasted red peppers, as well as a splash of red wine vinegar. Trust me guys, the vinegar in this recipe totally makes it. We'll add just a touch of salt and some pepper and give that a mix. Then we can turn our attention back to our crostini. Let me just tell you guys, this stuff is good. I just tried it with a fork and it's top quality stuff. So I've got my lovely little crostini bites and I'm just going to start by spreading some goat cheese on top. If you're not a fan of goat cheese, of course you could swap in some cream cheese here instead, but I love the tangy earthiness of goat cheese with the sweet smokiness of the roasted red pepper mixture. Trust me guys, this is a winner. You have to take my word for it sometimes. In fact, I have been told by the crew behind the camera that it's one of the best recipes that we have made in the last six months. And that is saying a lot, because we make a lot of recipes in this kitchen. Not a single one made it out of the studio. Finally, for a sweet summer inspired offering, I am excited to share my peach basil crostini recipe. 
which are insanely simple to make but have so much amazing flavor. The secret to making these really sing is to have some nice ripe peaches to work with. As you can see, I've got my peaches finely diced in my bowl. To that, I am going to add some freshly chopped basil as well as a little honey for some additional sweetness. Take my word for this, guys. Peaches and basil were meant to be together. They just were. It's like the law of physics or something. Taste physics. I don't know. Once again, we are going to get our cheese on our crostini. In this case, I'm actually using a really nice, smooth ricotta cheese, which has a really lovely texture and adds richness to this. You could do this with some goat cheese as well. Both are really tasty. Ricotta is a little sweeter and a little nuttier. Of course, goat cheese is a little tangier and a little earthier. Then I'm going to pile my peaches on top. Serve this up with just a drizzle of balsamic glaze and you have got one killer appetizer your friends are going to be talking about until next summer when you make it again. I hope you'll give all three of these yummy recipes a try. If you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo because you guys know how much I love seeing your kitchen creations. Keep in mind, all three of these delicious recipes are being featured on HealthyMealPlans.com so you can find them there. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.